Let's open my prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together for the fellowship that you give to us, uh, united around your Son, around the cross, and our forgiveness and the promise of eternal life. Uh, be with us now as we study your word and, and continue to unite us and bring us closer together and, and closer to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, um, we are on 1 John uh, chapter 1, verse 5 and following. And page 3 of the study guide, about three quarters of the way down. Uh, 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 7. So you like to read? This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, in him there is no darkness at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Okay. So how is God light? What does that mean? Um, he's good. He's holy. Good. Holy. Okay. What does light do? Reveals. It reveals things. Hmm. All right. So, so God is light. He reveals... Uh, things to us. He reveals the truth to us. He reveals salvation to us. He has revealed himself to us by his son and by the um, by the prophets and apostles. All right? What is the darkness of which John speaks? Sin. Sin? All right? Sin and you know I would I would combine with that um, not just sin, but ignorance. Um, you know, if we talk about light being that which is revealed, then darkness would be um, our, or you know, not knowing what is evil, not recognizing evil, um, or or being in it so deep that you can't even tell the difference. You know, it's, it's sort of uh, oh, it's like when we were. We were shopping for a suit for me, and my wife informed me that black is not black. There are different degrees of black. Oh, that is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and better buy both pieces at the same time. <laughs> yeah, and that was the problem we were having is we couldn't find a a, a, a decent affordable suit that um, where you could get the whole thing together, and that it was in my size. <laughs> So, <laughs> so, but it was, you know, there's these sort of different degrees of black. Well, when you're, you know, if you're blind, or or you're you're walking around, you know, now imagine walking around in a in a, a suit store, looking for a black suit, <laughs> but the lights are all turned off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good luck with that. Well, you know. Fun. So. Or you know, for that matter, trying to find any suit, you know, trying to match things. You know, when you're in darkness, you can't tell one thing from the other. And so you look at our world and and the the <laughs> good that it's called evil and the evil that's called good. Well, when you're in darkness, how do you expect people to um to be able to tell the difference? Mm -hmm. A friend of mine once said, "You can't blame the world for acting like the world." Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> We, and it, it's funny because we do that. We we expect the world to to act like Christians. To be good. Yeah, Christians don't even do a good job of acting like Christians. <laughs> All right. So and yet we expect the world who doesn't know Christ, you know, who doesn't know His love and can't even fathom it, to somehow act like they know that love. That's just not fair. 
<laughs> we can't place those kind of expectations on them. And just bless their hearts. <laughs> bless their hearts. <laughs> my favorite saying. <laughs> and Pastor <laughs> got up there and said, don't do that. It's all well, about context. <laughs> 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 Nothing wrong with saying it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> look at what you say right before that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. All right, what does the light bring to light? Our sin and our need for Christ. Okay, yeah. Yeah, our sin, our need for Christ. Good. Yeah, when we're when we're confronted with Christ, we're confronted with our own sin. Uh, somebody asked me last week, why is it that when you tell somebody about Jesus that doesn't know him, why do they get so angry? And this is this is coming from someone who's a, pretty much a new Christian. And uh and and she said, I, I don't get it because this is this is such a great message, you know. Who would get angry about this? This is we're giving you a free gift. I said, well, yeah, but you know, the problem with that gift is it's forgiveness. And forgiveness is meaningless unless you confess your sin. And you know, by if you tell someone you're forgiven, what you're implying is you have sins that need <laughs> forgiveness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now hold on a minute there. All right, so what's the basis of being cleansed from sin? Or being good. Being good. <laughs> Doing right. Uh, let me think. Uh, oh, sure. Obeying the rules. <laughs> no. Well, if you're at the if corn festival, the, um, apparently the right. answer is buying a raffle ticket from certain churches. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> you hey, you know, I, I bet their gas doesn't get shut off. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about raffle We sold raffle tickets here once. Yeah, Do but you, you didn't when do it when you had an opportunity to share the gospel <laughs> with the community, though. <laughs> no, but I know once we rented tables out here in the parking lot for a flea market, and I thought that was a great hit. I wish we'd do it again. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It was just... <laughs> Sorry, we're at the Gorn Festival, and I was walking past a church booth, and and they were trying to offer me a raffle ticket, really? and uh, and times. and I said no like five times, and finally <laughs> she says, "Would you like information about our church?" <laughs> Where was that while <laughs> What? <laughs> Why would you know? So so would, oh. In other words, what you're saying is, would you like me to come to your church? You know, would you like to come to our church, and we'll get your money that way? I know, I know. So I know. Bless but their she's hearts. Going <laughs> <out of subject. laughs> you know, well, this is so way off. But why is it just lately I'm seeing all these signs in front of houses, Harvest Ridge Church? That's a way of putting your is, name is out. Is that a new movement or no. is it a church? I mean, no. I don't know. No, no. It's been yeah, around for ages. That's the, isn't that the one that, that does the party in the park? Um, yeah. Is that the same? That's on James Kilby. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what did you say? It, it's, it's the one Jane Kilby belonged to that was our director of the preschool. Mm -hmm. That's a real big one. So it's been here over 15 years. Yeah, and I think it's just a way of putting the church's name on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, because there was one on Sugar Ridge, you know, just mm -hmm. tonight I saw one on Fenner Ridge. Mm -hmm. Yesterday I saw one in Elyria. So. Wish we'd have thought of it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we still nice could, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how much uh, those no. signs cost to make. The <laughs> no. Maze Journey had theirs out there back when we, a year ago. Where I live out there in the park, mm -hmm. they come in there every once in a while and they'll go to the park grounds and and they can't burn and hot dogs and everybody yeah, everybody right, yeah. in the park. And then another time, I think it was the same church, that was given five dollars for the free gas at Sheets. Mm -hmm. And they would even pump it. But they you know, it was really neat though doing that because they were really organized. There must have been about ten of them and they had let only so many, you know, in and around and they had it really organized. And it was given five dollars for the free gas, so 
They were yeah. really going all out. <laughs> That's great. No, I, if I see signs out. in people's yards, I'd rather it be for a Christian church than, you know, for politics and, you know, whatever else. So. I, I guess I just wondered because just so recently now mm -hmm. I've seen three of them and I thought what's going on yeah. and I didn't realize that two states been going on. Well, see, that's why they're putting the signs out there. You didn't know about them. Now mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. It's an effective well, campaign. There's a couple that are closer than Shepherd. <laughs> 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 I have a hunch you probably wouldn't like it there. <laughs> Pardon me? I but have a hunch you probably wouldn't like the no, way they do I, services. I, <laughs> but see, then, then again, I know there are a lot of people. I don't know how else to put it, but they're self-ordained ministers, and, and I have mm -hmm. a problem with that. So I'm not sure if this group of churches that seem to be popping up, if it's all part of the thing. I, I don't know. A lot of them are. I don't know about that one. I'm not sure who they're connected with, but there's a lot of these sort of, um, you know, somebody just sort of plants their flag and, you know. Well, and the three signs now for this particular church, they're all in front of a well-kept home. I mean, in front of a house. Oh, sure. So, there might be members, probably. Perhaps. I mean, right I would think. I don't think a non-member would want somebody else to see the yard. Shit, I'm like the plain man. They're on Stony Ridge. It's so obvious. Well, I guess that one on Sugar Ridge, you know, I passed with a Faulkner, and so that one I'm familiar with, and I thought, well, you know, maybe they're smart having this house. I'm sure it's cheaper to keep up than building a church like we do like we have and you know now are in a financial pinch. Mm -hmm. I really thought that until now when I've seen two more. You know, it, it yeah. okay, I'm yeah. sorry. No, they got a big yeah. And you know the big party in the park in the fall with the fireworks and the free food and all the games and fun. That yeah, Harvest Ridge does. Yeah. Oh really? Yeah. 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 All the bounce oh, houses and all that kind fun. of stuff. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. No. See, there's <laughs> a church. So, uh, what are they doing for the community? They're giving to the community mm -hmm. instead of taking. Mm -hmm. Something that, to be said. Is that for. the one that was doing like the duck thing and everything? Or? No, that was no. the Methodist church. Okay. Yeah, the Methodist church. They were giving stuff away yeah. too. So kudos to them. Yeah, that was my friend. She. And I was hanging out babysitting parts. She says, no, I guess you don't need that. <laughs> Saying, I asked him to join our church, but don't need that either. <laughs> 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 All right, um, verse 8. If we claim to be with us, and we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is free from unjust. Him forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we claim we have not sinned, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our lives. Good. Keep going. Two more verses. Oh. My dear children, I write you this so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ. The right, uh, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Yeah. <coughs> so, um, oh, you know, we didn't definitively answer that previous question. Um, <coughs> what is the basis for our being cleansed from sin? Jesus. Yeah. The blood of Christ. Sorry. The yeah. The whole good works thing. Not oh, did I get us off track? I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> okay, we do that a lot. <laughs> you just makes it worse. <laughs> <laughs> we invited you. Oh, <laughs> uh, you did? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> 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 All right. It's okay, but I can get off track. All right. Um, so we, we talked last time about Gnosticism, just a reminder of that is the those who sort of claim to be in the know 
um, is, is sort of what the word means that to believe that um, that the spiritual is good and the physical is bad, right? Um, so they claim freedom from sin, right? And so what John here does is he points out how absolutely ludicrous this is. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us, right? And you know, once in a while you'll run into people. I remember one time we were out, we were out canvassing with the ongoing ambassadors for Christ, and um, this is when we were in Wisconsin, and we actually there was a guy he was a Unitarian, and he, and he said, no, I don't have any sin, I don't need forgiveness. Oh really? Okay, but you know nobody's perfect. Oh, well, I don't know. Really? Okay. Well, it's great to meet you because <laughs> you're the first person I've ever met that <laughs> was. You know, I don't know. It wasn't a house <laughs> that. I, I mean, I wasn't on the team that went to to his house. Oh, yeah. But they were just they were sort of dumbfounded. Like, and there's really. not much you can say. I mean, yeah, you could sort of Ten Commandments, you know, and you know that's and that's what. Well, Jesus dealt with that though. Um, with the the rich young ruler, and you know that uh, that he said, "Well, you know, well, what are you reading in the in the Bible?" And, and the guy says, "Oh, you know, um, love Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself." I do. And 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 he says, "Yep, that's right." And the guy says, "Done that." <laughs> and oh, Jesus no. says, "Okay." Go sell everything you have. <laughs> and he went away sad. <laughs> like, oh, I haven't even done the first part yet because money is st still more important to me than God. Oh, okay. So, unfortunately, you know, he wasn't ready, at least at that point in his life, to, to say, okay. <laughs> but of course, Jesus knew his heart. He knew that that this guy um, was valued his money very highly, and uh, and so Jesus was pointing out to him, nope, that's not going to do it. Now, you know, Jesus has his reasons for things. My, what I would have done is go, okay, now you got the point. <laughs> you know, <laughs> now let me just, But you know, apparently this guy needed to, uh, some time to, to think on this and we don't get you know the rest of the story if he kind of figured it out or, or what but makes a point though all right so <clears throat> what does God's faithfulness have to do with our forgiveness it says he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins we can trust him all right we can trust him all right, trust him. Okay, why do we trust him to forgive sin? Why else did he die for us? All right, because he died for us. All right. Now, because the thing is, it says he's faithful and just, and he'll forgive our sins. Now think about that. Just and forgiving, those are two different things. Yeah. But what what is just? That he keeps his promises. He promised to forgive our sins. And he's faithful to that promise. He is a just God who keeps his promises. If he says he'll do it, he'll do it. <clears throat> it's always interesting that Christ takes them to the Father. Your sins. He yeah. Did, you know. And uh, I, I have a tough time with it. I said nobody's ever seen God. Just maybe Christ himself. Uh, I always get the uh, picture that he don't want to be the contaminated from us. You know, so sure. Keep your uh, distance. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and that's the thing is, a lot of people, um, you know, they they figure, well, I I haven't sinned very much. Huh. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a killer. You know, I I've never committed grand theft or anything like that. So I'm I'm basically a good person. But the problem is, is God's house is pure and holy and perfect. All right, and now if if you walk into a completely clean house and the only thing that's dirty is the bottom of your feet, there's going to be a problem. <laughs> All right, 
it doesn't matter, you know, about the rest of you. You contaminated it perfectly, you know, or, or for that matter, these, um, you know, think about like a, 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 an operating room. You know, oh, well, it's just a little dirty. You know, that's not good. Yeah, you know, if you um, want the infection in the right. surgical site, then yeah. you, know, you say it's Yeah, a friend of mine works at a, um, he's one of these guys that when your hard drive on your computer crashes, um, and you have some important data on there, or like the the FBI wants <laughs> to recover some information off of a hard drive that's been thrown into the fire or something like that. All right, he will take these things and in, in, into this room, this this clean room, that is um, <clears throat> where he wears the special suit, that, um, looks like a radiation suit or something, and um, and and they take the hard drive apart and sort of take the layers apart of, of it and, and they can um, put it into some special thing that it will read the information off of it and, um, and but the thing is you get just a little bit of dust on there and it's going to totally mess up what you're trying to do so this room has to be completely clean and you think oh, what's a little bit of dust <laughs> so um, but yeah that, that totally messes things up. <coughs> um, all right. Have you ever said of one of your actions that wasn't really sin when you knew it was sin? Or do you ever do you ever sort of debate about it <coughs> and go, well? Was that or not? I'm not sure. I think I can justify it. I think, you know, I didn't have a choice or, or well, it's not technically sin. Well, if sin is the same as being bad and I think it is I've been corrected by my grandkids more than once. You know, things just come out of my mouth and and I'll turn kind of back with it to say that that's kind of bad. I say, oh, it, I know, but it wasn't real bad. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's really, I mean, that's just one little example. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Even my little kids call me on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Is it, isn't that embarrassing when they do yeah. that? Yeah. You go, yeah. man, I hate it when my kids do that to me. <laughs> <laughs> get together and conspire. Yeah. Who's going to watch Daddy today? <laughs> oh, they all do. Oh, I figured they might at least spell each other. Take a break. No, there's no break for that. No, no break for him. You got to have fun with it. You got to have fun with them. So you're outnumbered and you can't win. You're going to lose all the way around. Well, I'm outnumbered in here too, so I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> we are outnumbered. So, you know, really, though, if you think about it, as soon as you say, well, was that sin or, you know, and you're, you're sort of trying to figure it out, you, you're you already, whatever it was that you're doing clearly was not done um, as an expression of faith in God, <laughs> all right? If you're going, well, it might have been sin, you know, then already your motivation for doing it was presumably selfish, you know, or so already you're already breaking the first commandment. Even even if you're sort of contemplating whether it's sin, you're already breaking that commandment. You should be, I mean, whatever you do, you should have absolutely no doubt in your mind that it is not sin before you do it. But, of course, even the things that we do that are good, what motivates you to do it? You know, ideally, it's my faith in Christ. Right? My but, love of God. Yeah, it's my love of God, my love for my neighbor, right? But really, is that why I do everything that I do? I mean, guilt doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> do it out of guilt. You know, I mean, yeah, <laughs> if you do that, because because you know, because I'll feel better. Oh well, that's a selfish motivation. You know, it, does that mean you shouldn't do nice things because you're going to feel good? No, there's nothing wrong with feeling good about it. But, I mean. Let's face it, just because of our sinful nature, 
we need more than just Jesus died for me and therefore I'm gonna everything I do is gonna be for him you know I, I firmly believe that but I still um, double check my speed every time I see a police officer when I'm driving Oh. And I don't intentionally speed. No. Well, a little. <laughs> yeah, and then there's the toll. Oh. So yeah, yeah, like that. 10 miles an hour, the like, police officer behind speed back up. I know you said the speed, that was the speed limit, but why'd you slow down so much? Because it's, it's, it's just automatic. It's automatic. Even well, if you're yeah. not doing anything wrong, you actually, just do uh, that. Like no, actually, in that case, it was because he was pulled over and I was slowing down to go around <laughs> to get over into the other lane. Yeah. So otherwise, you can get pulled over <laughs> for not getting yeah. over. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just like. A he wasn't really afraid. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, I mean, realistically, though, yeah, I mean, we do things. Um, you know, it's, it's that, that gut. You know, I, and I'll be, I can be stopped at a red light, and and I see a police car, and I sort of do a mental check. Is everything okay? Yeah, is everything? Do I <laughs> do I have my turn signal on if it needs to be on? Do I you know, double check the light again? You know, and and, and you know, check. Is there there's no one way signs or no turn on reds or you know, <laughs> whatever. You know, just because I know I'm a sinner. <laughs> No, you yeah, don't want to see nature, nature, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 you don't so want to see your name on the police <laughs> That's Sometimes right. Sometimes you don't do First anything wrong. You pull me over, but just to tell me my tail light was out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you were. And I mean, how do you <laughs> know <laughs> that? You know, I mean, how do you know that? No. You don't know that. Pull in the garage, turn the lights off. <laughs> yeah, you don't see it. It's not like you see your back of your car. Yeah. Yeah. I was pulled over, and I just automatically assumed I did something wrong. <laughs> Well, the first time it happened to me, I did say the first time, <laughs> the only time, <laughs> one time, but, well, it, and to this day I maintain it, it was not right. I was stopped for speeding, but now, you know where I live on Westwood, so to go up, to get on to 83, I have to go up an incline, and then I made a left turn, so again, I'm still going up. Now, I had this old Ford. Well, that time I wasn't there, but anyway, so when I once got to the bottom of the hill, a policeman was right behind me and had his lights beating. Now, I'm really, I was very ignorant, although I was working at the school, so I had to be like in the late 30s, anyway. And I saw the police car with the lights behind me, but I never pulled over. You probably couldn't imagine you did anything wrong. Exactly. <laughs> I thought, well, why don't you just go around me? Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not blocking traffic or anything. Well, when I finally pulled over, I thought, well, gee, I guess I... Well, anyway, yes, he got me for speeding. Mm -hmm. And see, now this goes back. Let me see. I started <laughs> up at school and... <laughs> Robin was 10, so yeah, I was in my late 30s, so yeah, in the late 60s, about 68, 69, and by golly, it wasn't until years later they did say that those first radar guns were not correct. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. But see, I, I didn't, I had to go to court and I didn't know, I didn't know what in the world was going to happen, and I know my husband told me, just please he said, well, just what you plead guilty, guilty, not guilty, or no contest. No contest. No contest. Yeah. That's what it was. So I pleaded no contest, but it was just against my mm. principles. I, I, don't, you know, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to stop once too late then. I was pulling into the park and pulled into the park right behind me. And, uh, well, he says, I stopped you, he says, because you were weaving. And he wanted to say, you know, thought I was drinking. But he says, I don't smell anything on you. <laughs> and I says, well, I says, I had two cups of Bob Evans coffee. I says, I didn't realize it was that strong. I said, <laughs> <laughs> but when I was going down the street, you know, on Chestnut and uh, Chestnut and Marinagle, there we mm -hmm. have to turn like this. So you have to weave, you have to go like that. Right. Plus it was chuck holes, you know, just tore apart there. 
So I tried to go around and, you know, try to avoid that and go. I guess maybe he thought that was that. And I didn't say anything to him, but I thought to myself, boy, if anybody, if anybody was going to have you. <laughs> you know, I mean, I didn't oh, say that, but say I that. thought to myself, well, you know, because. So he says, okay, he says, I don't smell anything on you. I says, I guess you're okay. Then you can go. <laughs> Stop me for no reason. See him. He could have been out there chasing some kind criminals <laughs> and, and we get, get upset if, if someone do you know accuses us of something we haven't done and be, you know we know we're sinners <laughs> they're like well if you're gonna accuse me of something at least come up with something i actually did it shouldn't be that tough you know <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. i always try to find a way to get out of it I t many of my teachers have uh, told stories of them getting pulled over for speeding and a couple of them said that the way they get out of a ticket is they go I'm sorry, officer. I just had such a tough day with the kids at school, and they say, "Hey, <laughs> here from now on." Alright. <laughs> 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 um. So, but this is this whole idea of of it wasn't really sin and, and trying to justify our sin. Um. You know, it, <laughs> it always strikes me as, as so strange for Christians to do that because, well, we're forgiven, and so. <coughs> Why it's it you know it's such a hassle to try to to sort of come up with excuses for our sin, and it's so easy to just say, "I'm sorry, God, please forgive me," you know, and yet we take the hassle route. We I want to I want to make sure before I confess this sin that I'm really in the wrong here, you know, and and I see that you know the. I, for that matter, I know I do it. I'll, I'll be I'll be arguing with my wife, and I realize that I'm wrong halfway through the <laughs> argument. But I don't want to admit I'm wrong. Don't repeat this. Don't repeat <laughs> well, she this. knows it. <laughs> she knows it. We all know it. <laughs> Teresa's probably sitting over there watching. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, we got it. <laughs> So. Uh, nobody right now. Oh, well then you're good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. It's recorded though, so you can watch it later. Um, well. <laughs> but uh, no, the so it's it's easier to sort of keep on with that and and try to justify yourself, even if you know you're wrong, than to just stop and say, or well, it's easier for our sinful flesh to do that. It actually would be easier to stop and say, "No, I'm wrong. You're right. I'm sorry. And be forgiven. And it's done. And it's over with." But, you know. Oh, I know because they they clocked me at going 65 at the bottom of the hill. Well, now that's why I remember that car in particular. It it had no no get up and go. It would never hit that high speed. I mean, so that's why my kids <laughs> well, and my husband... Well, coasting. When you're coasting, maybe it would hit that because you were coasting down there. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, so my family, they, they believe me and they said, Ma, that car wouldn't go, you know, it doesn't go that fast <laughs> anyway. And, but, right, so I did plead no contest. But right, I, I just felt so certain about that. Oh yes, I will admit to being wrong many times. <laughs> That's a not that one. Yeah, <laughs> that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give me for something else that I actually. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So where are you when I am going 65 yeah. in the 55 zone <laughs> or whatever? Right. Yeah. Or somebody passes me in the no passing zone right. or 90. <laughs> well, right, and you know, <laughs> that's what we really want, right? Right. Like, now hold on a minute there. Yeah. I just got passed by this other guy not yeah. too long How ago. How come you didn't get him? Yeah. yeah. That's not fair. It's <laughs> the same thing I always told my kids. Two wrongs don't make a right. Yep, but three rights make a left. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next question. How is Jesus our advocate? Or a... Uh, in the NIV it says he speaks to the Father in our defense. Because he speaks to our fa to his Father in our defense. In our defense. <laughs> right. That's okay. what an advocate does. Yeah, so how is his righteousness important in this case? 
Right. 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 He pleads on the basis not of our righteousness, but on his own righteousness. <coughs> because you know, it's not it's not Father forgive them because there's really nothing to forgive here. They're good people. You know, he says, Father forgive them. Man, they're such sinners they don't even realize what they're doing. You know. But I'm the righteous one. Forgive them because of my merit not theirs. Right? <clears throat> and uh, it says, He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. What does atoning sacrifice mean? A sacrifice that brings forgiveness. Think of the blood and the holy of holies every year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, it's it's fulfilling the law. It's it's meeting the requirement. All right, uh, chapter two, verse three. Someone else want to read? And by this, just three. Uh, three through six. And by this we may be sure that we know know him if we keep his commandments. He who says, I know him, but disobeys his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word in him, truly love for God is perfected. By this we may be sure that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Alright. So, the Gnostics again, um, <clears throat> claimed to have special knowledge of God, but they rejected the concept of sin. So, can you know God without keeping His commandments? No, because you don't. Forgiveness is not a problem, so you don't really know God. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't know, if you reject forgiveness because you reject the concept of sin, you don't know God. Oh. And if you know God, why would you not walk in His commandments? Right. I mean, why would you do that? Right. Now, um, uh, I don't know if you heard, uh, Robert Schuller just retired. Didn't um, know that. Yep. Uh, so I think his, his daughter. daughter, yeah, is taking over for him. Um, I haven't heard her yet, but uh, yeah, Robert Schuller, he said, I, I don't preach about sin. He, I mean, he, he flat out said, I was listening to an interview with him, and, and he, he said, no, I, I don't talk about sin. That, that, that uh, you know, pulls people down. Yeah. yeah. You pull them down, you can't pull them, if you don't pull them down, you can't pull them back up. Right, that's the problem. The gospel's meaningless without the law. It's called gospel reductionism. I love that term, right? And gospel reduction. Gospel reductionism, yeah. And what it does is, gospel reductionism is teaching the gospel without the law. All right? And you think, well, that's more gospel then, right? Well, no, what it's doing is, it's taking away the power of the gospel. <laughs> it's making it, it's reducing it to the point of being meaningless. Yeah. Because you Why can't talk you about, it? God loves you. Well, yay. Okay? And that's wonderful and all. But... The amazing thing about God's love is not that He loves me. You, know, you go, well, you know, that's because I'm so awesome. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's not because of that. You know, it's because you are. Um, it's because of Christ. And God's love doesn't save us by itself. Correct. The fact that He loves us is why He did give us that mercy. It's the mercy of Christ. Says. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Because God loves everybody. Right. But not everyone is saved. That's right. Yep. That's absolutely right. So, good point. Um. <clears throat> All right. Uh... So, how would you answer someone who says, I know Jesus, but I don't need to go to church to be saved? 
You can be saved without going to yeah. church. Yep. But then what do you do with it? Do you sit on it? Sit on your mm -hmm. salvation and do nothing else? What do you know about Jesus? Strengthen them, build your faith, and yeah. right. witness and to other people your, of your faith. How could you stay away from church, from other Christians, and from mm -hmm. worshiping mm -hmm. when you love God? And it tells us to take the communion often. Yeah. So that's what right. we need to do. And the scripture tells Forget us do so not neglect to meet together. Right. And it keeps so Satan from yeah. cutting yeah. us away from the oh, herd of Christians. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're all by ourselves. Oh, yeah, exactly. Get us. Yeah. Yeah, it's not a it's not a question of it's not even a question of obedience. It's not go to church because you because you, you should, because you oughta, because you have to, right? It's why wouldn't you want to? Why wouldn't you want to be there? God is giving you forgiveness of sins and, and he's gonna He's going to strengthen your faith, and he's going to, you know, it's it's like, it it it, it's like, my wife wanting to say, you know, hey, come here, I want to give you a kiss. No, why why would I want that? <laughs> you know, God said, come here, I want to tell you how much I love you. Mm -hmm. You know, no, I, I, I'm busy. But can't he tell us that in a beautiful field? Or out on a lovely golf course where we're doing something we love to do. Can't he tell us that in our own home? Pastor, he does. Sure. <laughs> but not as fully. Because there's a lot of things that we can learn about God. We, from nature. From our surroundings. We can learn that he's creative. We can even arguably learn that he loves us in the sense that if he didn't why would he give us such a beautiful world yeah all right why would he go through all the hassle if he didn't care about us okay but we can't learn about his atoning sacrifice anywhere but in the scriptures mm -hmm. and so you know, here's an opportunity to be in the scriptures with other christians to be built up together, to be um, <coughs> you know, to hear His word proclaimed to you, to hear um, to hear His forgiveness <coughs> proclaimed to you, to receive His body and blood, where He physically touches you and says, "I love you." It, 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 it's you know, rejecting that, turning away from that, saying, "No, I don't need that," is like saying, "No, I don't need a hug, I don't need a kiss," you know, where God says, "Come here." Let me physically touch you and, t and show you my love for you. And <laughs> I did that last week. <laughs> <laughs> it really, as mouthy as I am, it, it's tough. I mean, I lived with someone who never went to church. He used to go. And I have good friends. And they're, you know, they are friends, and I think of them as being good people, you know. But how come you don't go to church? Well, I don't know. I used to. I never really say anything. So, yeah, I'm I'm one, but it's tough. It's a tough thing. I don't know really what to say to these people when they just say, oh, I used to go. And I think for some people, it's that they think that it's because you oughta, and they go, ah, God will forgive me. And, um, or, or they go, ah, my track record's so bad already, what's one more? You know, um, that's if you're living in the law, um, you know, or it's just a simple matter of the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And, uh, you get out of the habit, and you go, ah, eh, I'll go next week. But that's not helpful to them. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's not beneficial, and you know, mm -hmm. and that's sort of using the the cave illustration from this morning. That there's times where we need to go into the cave where they're hiding and say, "Hey, <laughs> there's light out there." But it hurts my eyes. Oh, very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, that's going to expose my sin. <laughs> and 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 a lot of people, you know, go. Oh, if I go back to church, everyone's going to look down their noses at me and go, well, it's about time you came back. <laughs> <You know? laughs>
And the sad thing is that Somebody might happen. Somebody says that, shame yeah. on them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because then, then, what does that mean? That means that what they're saying is, well, I fulfilled my duty. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you're here for the wrong reason. <laughs> I remember going once and calling someone. They said, well, it's full of hypocrites. <laughs> well, they say, well, it's a hospital for sinners. Come join us. <laughs> oh, you didn't say always room for one more? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like a hospital for sinners. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have the proverbial, you have people who say, well, I haven't gone for a long time, and I came, and oh my goodness, they just made so much attention and all this stuff, and I was so embarrassed, I'm never going back. Or... Well, I hadn't been for a long time, and I went, and no one said boo to me. You can't win. <laughs> I'm being nasty. Well, I mean, it's a reality, I'm though. Like this. <laughs> We're going to hear that a lot, you know. <laughs> but the good news is, Bless my heart. they were paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope you got the gospel, too. <laughs> I don't know if the always in for one more hypocrite is going to really give me. No, I was, I was, I was kidding. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that I, I don't recommend that. Yeah, that, that wouldn't go over well. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to ask for forgiveness by the end of this class. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the beauty of of reading First John because it's all about forgiveness. Um, all right. <coughs> All right, so, well, and that leads to the next question. Do you keep God's commandments? No, we do not. All right? We don't, then, well, then it's, but it says, though, that um, um, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commandments. A man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in Him. Whoever claims to live in Him must walk as Jesus did. So, do you walk as Jesus did? I wish. <laughs> if, if you're trying to do the will of God, I think you're walking as Jesus did. Because I, I, I can't keep the commandments perfectly. I, I try, but I can't. I know I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm impossible. But I, I don't thumb my nose at them. I'm, I don't mean I'm trying like a whiny. Well, I'm trying, but that that's my, that's my walk. That's my. How do I explain that? Okay. All right. Well, that's here's my, the thing. I, that's my practice. Yeah. All right. So. <clears throat> what you're what you're really saying is that you have faith and you love God and, and you want to do the things that He wants you to do, right? Like all the times that I have to say to my wife, "I'm sorry, I have no idea why I did that," <laughs> <laughs> right? So, um, that, but, there's an like illustration that I use in confirmation where you know. If you trust in God, if you have faith that He died, did die for you and forgives your sins, all of so the things that He did are put on you, and therefore you are just in His righteousness. Right, right, yeah, and and that's the that's the great thing. It's great to know they're paying attention. Um, <laughs> we don't just walk in Jesus's um, footsteps. We walk in His shoes. He puts his shoes on us and takes ours on him. And um, and he puts his robe on us and takes ours on him. He completely dresses us in his holiness. So it's, it's important to understand here, though, that the word that's um, translated in the, in the NIV, obey, um, is, as I have it here in the question, keep. Right? This is the same Greek word that is um, where in the Christmas story where it says Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Right? So th the idea here is to treasure, to value. Right? And we do. We value God's commands. Not as much as we should. 
because we're sinners. But we know that these are, are commands that are given to us out of love because God knows what's best for us and he wants a relationship with us. All right? And he knows that, that those things are good for our relationship with him. And um, <clears throat> but and he also points them out to us so that we can know. Um, he points them out to us so we can know how badly we failed him, and how much we need forgiveness, so that we recognize the sacrifice that he made for us in Christ. All right. So we do treasure, we do value those things. All right. Um, and so yeah, to to say um, if, if we obey him, well, I mean it. If you treasure them, you're going to want to obey them, right? So it's not a, a really bad translation; it just doesn't quite capture the the depth of the of the concept. Um, but uh, but you know what what John is pointing out here, looking at the whole context of Christ's atoning sacrifice, is that we all have to say that I don't obey His word. I don't keep his commands. I don't walk as Jesus did. All right? That's the first step. The beauty is Jesus took all the steps for us, including that one. Even, you know, even even confessing your sin, you can only do as an act of faith. I can't even confess my sin to God and ask for forgiveness unless I know that he is a forgiving God who will accept that confession and, and forgive my sin. Otherwise, why would I even bother? <clears throat> so, um, so what's the advantage of walking with God? You get good stuff. <laughs> you get good stuff. What? You, have, you get good, good stuff. stuff. You have abundant life. Okay. I came so that you would have life and have it more abundant. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you for clarifying that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I thought you... oh, it's so realistic. <laughs> sorry, but, you know, I, I've, I've heard too many name it, claim it preachers, you know, that say, oh, yeah, the great thing about walking with God is a new car, a new house, and, you know, <laughs> lots of money. I thought that's what it was. <laughs> So, no, absolutely, the, the abundant life. The, and, you know, that is so hard to explain to people that haven't experienced it, that don't know what it is to have that peace and that assurance and that, you know, that, that no matter what you face, that, oh, God is with me and he's going to take care of me. Um, I have written here, love of God is perfected in us. Is that what is in here? Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Keeps us word to love for God is perfected. Okay. I'm not sure I know what that means to it's, have my love perfected, but <laughs> maybe my joy is just more abundant. I don't know. <laughs> or my life. Um. <coughs> God gives us His love, right? My my job as a pastor is to point you to God's love. To, to, to bring His love to you, to, um, to bring His forgiveness to you, to, um, to, to bring you the gospel so that you will grow in faith. All right? Now, faith, by nature, produces obedience, produces good works. It's the nature of faith. It's not that our good works bring us to faith, it's not that our good works save us, but when you have faith in Christ, when you have saving faith, and you know your Lord and Savior, you will do good works. Not always, because you're still a sinner. Right? But that that saved new creation that, that God has made you to be is is constantly striving to to do things that are pleasing to God. Not out of fear, not out of you know trying to sort of bargain with him or say, all right, God, I'm going to do these good things so that you'll save me. No, that's not what faith does. Faith says, God, you are so great, <laughs> you are so wonderful, and so, um, 
just because of that, I'm going to do whatever you want me to do because you're great. <laughs> Alright, so last question and we'll close. Can anyone walk with God without faith? Impossible. No. It's impossible. Right? Um, so, yeah, you you can't, uh, you sometimes hear people say, well, you, you can't just talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Right? But really, walking with God is, is all about faith. It's all about knowing His forgiveness. It's about recognizing how many times we stumble and recognizing that every time we do, he picks us up. And that He's there every step of the way because every time we take a step, it is headed in some way off the path. It's hard to go through a day. One day? Yeah. Without no falls? You know, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I mean, you know, Paul talks about all my good works are filthy rags. Yeah. Right? Every good thing we do, even in faith, because we are sinners, is somehow tainted by sin, even just a little bit. That's really depressing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's really frustrating. And in you know, in a, in a society that, that emphasizes self-esteem, right? People get mad. That's bad for people's self-esteem. Oh, but here's the great thing: God loves us anyway. We don't draw our value from our own our own goodness, our own lives, our own works, our own abilities, right? Because all of that goes back to God, right? And the great thing about that is the problem with, with drawing your value from self-esteem is that you're going to fail yourself. No matter what you do, you are not going to live up to your own expectations. And if you, if you do, you're setting the bar pretty low. <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think Pastor should have been a stand up. He said, You're not, say it, Pastor. If you're living up to your own standards that you set for yourself, then you must have set the bar pretty low. Right? And that's the reality. Okay? And so if you say, Oh, well, you're a good person, you're a, you know, like, don't tell me that. You know, I. There was um, uh, somebody commented to me um, that that I look a lot like my dad, and I don't think I do, but this person thought I did, and I thought, you know, whether whether I look like my dad's face, I don't know, but I'd really love to look like his heart, because my dad was just an amazing guy, and and he loved everybody, and. And if I could have just his, where he would just, every his whole life revolved around the other people in his life. And I thought, boy, if I could, if I could look like that. And, and, and when the person made that comment to me, that was what I thought of. And then, and, but I didn't say it to them. Because I thought, well, they're going to go, wow, you're a pastor, and, you know, and, and all this. And, and, and that's you, you know, you, you do live up to that. And, and, I, and I have to say, no, I really don't. You know? And that's just living up to my dad, my earthly father. Boy, trying to live up to my heavenly father. Have fun. That's just depressing. You know, when Jesus comes along and says, you must be perfect because your father in heaven is perfect. Yeah, that was where John Wesley got his, um, the idea of, of, of perfection, the doctrine of perfection, that it's, he said, well, Jesus couldn't have said you must be perfect unless it, it were possible. Suffering wasn't speaking literally. Well, no, he was speaking literally, yeah, but the but point is is that no, so, no. you know, so much do you need God's forgiveness that even, you know, unless you are absolutely perfect, then you, you're not good enough. And, um, you know, the whole point was for people to go, but I'm not. Because then Jesus says, ah, but I am on your behalf. And, um, and so that the point of that, the point of a lot of the things that Jesus said, where, you know, where he said, go sell all your possessions or, or, or whatever, um, this whole point is, you don't measure up. But I have for you. 
And your value comes not from anything that you do because you're always going to end up failing. Your value comes from me. And I give it to you free. And you're forgiven. Alright. Any questions before we close? Let's pray. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we know that every time we try to walk with you, we stray off the path. You keep bringing us back, and, and you do it um, by sending your Son and his forgiveness, that it's his nail-scarred feet that have walked the path for us. And that it is by his path, by his carrying us all the way to you, by his righteousness, that we get to be with you forever. And just help us to always appreciate that and, and to live our lives um, with that knowledge, with that assurance, and um, with the desire to serve you and, and to glorify you and to thank you for all of your goodness. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs>